We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. And we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me, as always, are my two best friends and co-hosts. Mike Body, Michael Plant. What's going on, my dudes? Hey. What's cracking? Not much, man. Just a uh, long week of work, ready to talk some football with you guys. You know, I'm ready for some football. Aren't we all? Yeah, I hear you guys there. Um, let's jump into the Thursday night review. And guys, we actually had uh, had a pretty good game. Between the Broncos and the Jets. Yeah, this is this is definitely a runner for shit show of the year, but believe it or not, it wasn't a bad game. Eh. This still wasn't really played very well. Rippon did not look great throwing <laughs> three picks or whatever. Yeah, he, he gave he gave him the W though, man, but sure. then at points he, at points he looked good. And then at other points, it's like I think it was more Melvin Gordon, Gordon who looked good, to be what honest. Are the, what are the what in the world are you doing? Um, but the Broncos won 37-28, guys, and uh, I was kind of surprised Adam Gase wasn't shit can this morning. Yeah, that's weird. But that's, that's the biggest news whatever. out of this game. Yeah, but jumping into the top six scores of fantasy, start with uh, the first one from the Broncos. Melvin Gordon had twenty three rushes for one hundred and seven yards. Two touchdowns. He also had uh, two receptions in the passing game, guys. What do you take it away from his performance last night? He had a really good matchup against the Jets, but I mean, how many times are the Broncos going to get a positive game script where he can get 23 rushing attempts? Yeah, not often are you going to see him get that many rushes. So just, More like 15 to 20, not over 20. Yeah, that volume, I just don't know if it's sustainable, but you like to see it. The goal line work is the most yeah that that helps the most him getting most of the goal line work it also helps when you can bust off a 40 yard run to seal the game although right. philip Lindsay's gonna be yeah, coming back in the next week awesome. or two so i don't know if he's gonna be able to keep this up for the rest of the year one of yeah. them's gonna get the passing work one of them's gonna get the goal line and the more carries just no idea who's gonna get what yeah and then he had the, the, his upcoming schedule going into next week, he plays at New England, so that's a little right, scary yeah. for him. But then he gets Miami, Kansas City, then he's got their bye week. Then Atlanta, By that time, Philip Lindsay forward, should so. be fully healthy, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, this a, a bit, fuck, huge surprise <laughs> last night was uh, Tim Patrick, right? Six receptions, 113 yards, and a touchdown, guys. He exploded onto the scene. Yeah, I don't... Uh, where did he come from? He's just out of nowhere. He was okay last year. He somewhat made a name for himself. I guess with the injuries to Cortland Sutton and uh, the injury to KJ Hamler in the middle of the game, he finally got the opportunity to shine. I wouldn't be rushing to pick him up, but he could be on your radar, I guess. Yeah, he only in deep, only in deep leagues is he's is he worth picking up. And then the third guy from the Broncos is Jared Judy. He had two receptions for 61 yards and a touchdown, long touchdown. Did, did you see um, that long touchdown? Yeah. I did not. I missed it. Oh, he got – oh, he mossed that cornerback. He made him look like a did little he? boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brett Rippon, the Rippon and the Terran, he uh, underthrew the sh- – the <laughs> Jerry I'm sure you Judy. can swear, man. Yeah, he can't swear on this podcast. Okay? Don't <laughs> I don't know that. why, but I censored myself right there. LaPlante, how many tar- uh, how many targets did he end up having? I, I missed about half of this game, yeah. The thing is searching. While you're looking. Oh, I spelled his name wrong, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> he got uh, only four targets. I thought he would see more, to be honest. I know. For Z- I. I, uh, uh, Rippin seemed to just lock on to Tim Patrick from what I seen anyways. I wonder Maybe if that's it was why he because... threw three picks. Well, Rip, Rippin was, uh, obviously the third string quarterback coming into the season. So maybe they had him, him and Patrick had a rapport, you know, yeah. with the backups yeah, and stuff in practice. Kind of like how Daniel Jones and Darius Slayton had that rapport last year for preseason. Correct. Correct. 
Um, let's jump over to the Jets now. Sam Darnold. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> looked like he was just, he, he had Mitch Trubisky feet last night. He was just looking to run whenever he, he could, but he had 230 passing yards, six rushing touchdowns with a long touchdown run. Wasn't six, it like 40 six rushes yards? for 84 yards. Yeah. Not six rushing touchdowns, but <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> like, Damn, that's a good game. How many yards he get with that? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he didn't look bad. He looked okay at times, but he also could have had another. He could have had an interception too late in the fourth quarter, and one of the cornerbacks jumped the route. He just dropped the interception. He still does not look impressive to me. Uh, he he had a weird game. Like like sometimes he looked poised in the pocket, and then other times he just had happy feet. Like at one point he tripped over his own feet. Yeah, that's yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that happen to like a big name quarterback. Right. It was just funny. They guys, they have to be in line for the number one pick, right? They're uh, they have to be the worst team in football. Yeah, I can't think of any team worse than them at the very moment. But that's Giants, also because, maybe. That's also because of injuries too. Like they don't have Le'Veon Bell on the field. You know like going back to our over under podcast, I think we did that three weeks ago oh, at before the start of the season. And then Vegas had the Jets at seven wins. And it's yeah, we all smashed the under on that. That was crazy. Yeah. At all of us. I'm going to say that's a good call. Yeah, that didn't make any sense. But Jamison Crowder, guys, he had a good game. He had seven receptions for 104 yards. I was shocked he actually uh, played. He was he was questionable leading up into this, and I know he didn't practice much, but it's nice to see him play. He always gets the targets yeah, he, in this offense. Yeah, just, just a target monster. And then Jeff Smith kind of came out of nowhere, had seven receptions for 81 yards. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a Madden-created character right there, Jeff Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't, he's not anything. Yeah, I wouldn't be rushing. Forward, right? No. But I think we could probably start Jamison Crowder moving forward. Yeah, he's, right? he's probably the only one. I, he, he might even be – I know you picked on me last week for saying Josh Allen was matchup proof, right? <laughs> but – Jameson Crowder might be matchup proof just because he plays in the slot, so he's not going to get shadowed by a lot of cornerbacks or top tier cornerbacks, you know. So, and he seems to get near 10 targets every game. Oh, oh. Let me see how many targets he's getting. Yeah, man. I, I have him on a few rosters, but no. <laughs> it just got, I just kind of feel disgusting when you start Jameson Crowder. Yeah, just because right? the, the Jets, man. <laughs> I, it's it's not yeah. that flashy play, but I mean he's been injured two out of the four weeks. But in the two weeks he played, he has twenty three total targets. That's <laughs> just ridiculous. I mean, but it's the easiest throw on the field for Sam Darnold, and you know he's not a great quarterback. So you want to oh. do some game previews? Yeah, how's that sound to you guys? Sounds great, you tired, man. You, you tired, Dylan? <laughs> Why are you yawning? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Do we you just worry you? about your stuff over there? Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, Shouldn't have had that cup of coffee, man. In. You're going to crash now. <laughs> Perhaps. Keys but out. Uh, Arizona Cardinals at the Carolina Panthers. And Kyler Murray, he's been a stud for the first two weeks and then struggled a little bit last week. Threw it 35 times, completed 22 of them for 270. Two touchdowns, and he threw three picks and probably could have had a fourth Oof. one. Yeah, it wasn't but, uh, pretty. I'm digging this matchup this week against the Panthers. What do you guys think? Uh, he's... Kyler Murray's starter every week, obviously. You can't take him out. His rushing is probably second or third best in the league, and he's still a pretty good passer. He's throwing a ton all the time, so... Pretty likely you're going to start him every week. Yeah, you, especially with this matchup. Carolina's probably top five worst defense in the league. It's, and they're worst yeah. with rushing. So, I mean, you know Kyler Murray and Kenyon Drake are just going to eat this week. Maybe. Maybe Kenyon Drake will. Who knows? I feel like last year was a Yeah, fluke. Arizona's just so pass-happy. Yeah. That's what worries me about Kenyon Drake. Like, I didn't think they were going to be as pass happy as they are. But obviously, it's the addition so of Hopkins changes one. that, I guess. 
Yeah, having that number one receiver yeah. in the offense now. 37 targets through three games from DeAndre Hopkins, guys. That was my worst call of the offseason. I agree. I said yeah, that I didn't think. On my do not I didn't think he'd list. be this good. Uh, changing offenses in a COVID year, I just think he'd struggle, but he hasn't struggled at I, all. It's because the Cardinal, like Cliff Kingsbury, is actually pretty smart about this, like because they didn't have much time to prepare because of this whole COVID offseason. Most of his routes are mainly short. Just get him the ball, let him do the work. Definitely, yeah. It Imagine really that receiver core without Hopkins. <laughs> is Kyler even startable? Because you're going with Christian Kirk, Larry, and Andy Isabella. That's just gross. Hopkins saves yeah, him none big of them, time. I, I don't. I mean, Isabella He's okay. was relevant last week. He had two touchdowns. But I don't think he can week, sustain but I feel that. Like that was because. Well, it wasn't Christian. I'm pretty sure Christian Kirk was out yeah. last week, too. So that was one of the main things. They run a lot of four wide receiver sets, and Isabella working out of, out of the slot, you know, on one of the slot positions. He's fast as shit, too. Yeah, he, he definitely I wouldn't be rushing to pick course. him up necessarily right away. No, no, not yet. He's definitely a guy oh, yeah. stash, though. Yeah, I, I, I just, just, just I'd monitor that Christian Kirk injury. I mean, at the at the very least, if he if he goes down long term, then it's worth looking to pick up uh, Andy Isabella, maybe. Yeah, but uh, I, we kind of skipped over Kenyon Drake. I know we mentioned him a little bit, but he had 18 carries for 73 yards. It's good to see the 18 carries, but only the one target in the passing game. Are you guys? Uh, let me phrase it this way. One of you guys can answer this. Um, would you be trying to buy Kenyon Drake since his stock is low right now, or are you looking to sell him? I I would try and buy low, but I don't know if you're going to get people to actually sell low on him. That, that's the problem. I think it's people's opinions are uh, different, you know, for each person. So, I mean, the person who is a Kenyon Drake owner – they're looking at this Carolina matchup, and they're just like, oh, his, his value is just going to rise after this game. And I know people were saying that last week against Detroit. But with, it, with an offense that's this much in the red zone, it's hard And when he gets this much volume. It's hard not to like him. Yeah. Ike, let me ask you this. Uh, who would you rather have rest of the season, Kenyon Drake, or would you rather have Joe Mixon? Mm, I'd – Ah, oh, shit. Honestly, I'd probably have Joe Mixon. <laughs> Joe Mixon always starts okay. off slow and then somehow kicks it up in the end. Hopefully, hopefully the coaching gets Mixon in the game and passing, and then he becomes a top 10 running back instantly because he can pass catch. I just don't know why they don't use him. I don't understand it. He's already Agreed. got more. Targets than Kenyon Drake through three weeks with nine, it, that that which is weird, but it's so, still in that offense. It's all going to Giovanni Bernard, which sucks because it just hurts Mixon's value. Uh, I but so you're pretty much a sell on Drake. You try to sell him right now, huh? If he has a bad week at Carolina, you can probably get him pretty cheap. So I would I would think about doing that. I would I'd probably buy him. I don't think I'd be selling him just yet. Okay. Uh, we can skip over the tight end position. Yuck. Dan Arnold, uh, not too worried about it. Uh, but let's jump over to the Panthers side. Teddy with an in a, with a efficient week last week. He was 22 of 28 for 253 and a touchdown, 19.6 fantasy points. This is a pretty good matchup for him this week, guys. He, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Are you guys okay starting Teddy? Streaming no. Teddy this week? No. Super flex, I... maybe. Especially yeah, yeah. with some of the weird stuff that's been going down with, like, Carson Wentz and all that. Like, don't start him. The Cardinals' defense ain't – it ain't terrible this year. Like, it's not the pushover it was last year. So, I don't – no, I'd probably be looking other where, other places. Like, uh, Joe Burrow this yeah, week but... playing Jacksonville. That's a good streaming option. Definitely. Yeah. They could I, be I, done I, a lot. He'll you. have to throw. I, I... Nice segue into the dink with the dink and dump, uh, Mike the Plant, with uh, Mike Davis having 17 targets in the last two games. You got to love to see that, especially with guys who had uh, 
Christian McCaffrey and we're able to get Mike Davis off of waivers when he's producing. Hell, like even this. people that didn't have Christian McCaffrey and got him off waivers are happy. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, 17 targets through two games. He also, I want to say he had 14 carries last game as well, and he caught a touchdown through the air. So uh, Mike Davis is pretty much a, a must start, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, RB2 oh, yeah. going forward. Especially if he's going to get the work in the offensive game. They're always going to be down, and with Mr. Dink and Dunk, Teddy, two gloves. You know he's going to average probably about seven targets a game. Um, Ike, I know you were high on DJ Moore coming into this season. How you feeling? I still am high on him. It, he would actually would be a nice option to buy right now because, like you said, Teddy likes to throw short for the most part, and DJ Moore is best in his short routes. I just think he's going to get a ton of targets. Last week was just, I feel like, an outlier. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, when is it coming? coming? Week two, or yeah, week two, he had at least 10 plus targets. Because he caught eight to ten balls, so I mean, it's there. It just depends on the game script, I guess. Okay, Michael Plant. Let me ask you this: Who would you rather have rest of the season, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, who saw nineteen? Oh, do, do I get to week? pick the quarterback for the uh, LA Chargers? Nope, it's up in the air. If it's Herbert, Herbert, I'm going with Ten Keenan seconds. Allen. If it's Tyrod <laughs> Taylor, I'm going with DJ Moore. That's fine. <laughs> you just don't think it's going to last. He's yet. never able to sustain this many targets ever in his career, so I don't see why it'd start now. That's fair, but he is he is away from Adam Gay, so that always helps. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does. And Matt Rule might know how to use him since he used him in co- or he played for him in college, you know. And he's got yeah, he's got 23 targets through 3 games. Double-digit targets once. Um, tight end guy, Ian Thomas, hasn't really done shit. So he had four targets through three games, pretty irrelevant. Yeah. Um, you guys cool That's jump to the next game? Okay. So Colts at Bears. Phillip Rivers had a nice week. <laughs> Blowout over the Jets last week, 19 fantasy points. Uh... What do you guys think of this matchup for him against Yuck. the Bears? I mean, I know he's got a good offensive line, but he's going to be running for his life from Khalil Mack. <clears throat> uh, the problem is, though, pal, is that uh, Phil can't run. <laughs> All right, he'll be waddling his way <laughs> away from Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack can barely get a sack, yeah, so what makes you think he can do that? What has hey, he got, two through there. three games, if that, if we're lucky? Yeah, but... Yeah, I think so. He had a He's top five in pressures week, for the league, though. Yeah, that doesn't bother me, though. <laughs> and I think he's actually top we five. We need him to produce well. more sacks for us to even be good on defense. Who's this we? Are you part of the Chicago Bears? Robert Quinn, though, <laughs> is actually kind of surprising. <laughs> um, Let's jump over. <laughs> to, uh, let's stop talking about <laughs> defensive players. <laughs> Uh, jump it over to Jonathan Taylor. He didn't, He's getting the touchdowns, guys. He had a touchdown the last two weeks, but he's not getting the targets anymore. Is his volume the last two weeks, um, is that enough for you guys to stay excited about Jonathan Taylor Look, going forward? He's got to yeah. stay in your starting lineup. Yeah, I think uh, the only reason he's not getting the targets anymore is just because they've been in more positive game scripts. Like the first week when uh, they they were surprisingly down to Jacksonville, they needed to throw the ball more, and they just felt more comfortable with Naheem Hines. Now that Jonathan Taylor is more comfortable catching the ball, they just haven't been down, so they haven't needed to throw him the ball. I don't see why they'd want to use him that much in the first place. Why not let Naeem Hines take over the pass catching so you don't run your rookie running back into the ground? That does seem like a logical thing to do. They. I mean, Jonathan Taylor already has so many carries from college. Yeah. Guys, so there's already talk that he's not even going to get a great second contract. So, unfortunately, they might be thinking of running him into the ground because that's just how NFL teams treat running backs, unfortunately. But, yeah, I, you'd be starting Jonathan Taylor in, in this matchup because when they get in the red zone, he is the guy getting the red zone attempts. <laughs> Uh, 
jumping into wide receivers, guys, you could – is T.Y. No. Hilton droppable? You can't drop him. What? Yeah, Why? like, Why? what has he done? <laughs> Why can't you? He had three targets last week, LaPlante. Explain to me why you can't his drop. Big name. Well, because the name don't mean shit to me. Even so, Michael Pittman's first, outperforming him. Michael Pittman's injured. Ty is not. But he outperformed him last week. In one week, you're gonna take one week over what Hilton's done. In I his don't career? think Hilton's had more than. For one, you can't go off career. You have to go off this year. And one week for this year is better than his career. But I'm saying that T.Y. Hilton has a bigger sample size. Michael Pittman has a one-game sample size of of actually being the well, guy. Well, technically, they both have three games under Phillip Rivers, and that's the only sample size we can get. Uh, you got to – Michael Plant, four receptions on nine targets week one. Three receptions, five targets week two. Three receptions, no, three th- targets. Th- those are I, non-startable numbers. His biggest yardage to – He's not a touchdown producer. He can't make the big play anymore. Uh, his highest yardage total is 53 yards in three games. Why can't he make the big play anymore? You just saw those three games. So had, for one, Philip Rivers ain't throwing deep. To... <laughs> I'll give you that, but I think it's the same case as Jonathan Taylor. They've been in positive game scripts to where they don't have to throw the ball. That first week when they were down to Jacksonville, but they he got nine targets. I mean, granted, he only got four receptions. He still got nine targets. But he just haven't seen it after that. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of staying away from all these wide receivers now that Paris Campbell's out, and I'm kind of pointing my arrow towards Mo Alley Cox, guys, in all honesty, because him and Phil seem to have a pretty good rapport the last couple weeks, and he's got back-to-back touchdown weeks. Yeah, but can you rely on him getting a touchdown every week? I'm pretty positive he's had more targets than T.Y. Hilton the last, last two games. Two, I thought you were going to say total. Last two games, Moelle Cox has nine targets. And T.Y. has eight. Sorry, I actually don't think Moelle Cox caught a touchdown two weeks ago, but I know he was over 100 yards. And I think he actually dropped the touchdown, unfortunately. But, uh... We should probably move along. We're spending a little too much time on this Colts yeah, offense anemic. besides Jonathan Taylor, you know. But uh, jump over to the Bears, guys, and Nick Foles, here he comes to save the day. Three touchdowns in the second half, and Ike, can you save no. Big Dick Nick's back? It for one, it's the Atlanta defense. You can't <laughs> even stop a fly, I feel like. <laughs> uh, it's just nothing. I mean, sure, he I, obviously he did really good, obviously, but it's nothing to be bragging about. I mean, in all on, in all honesty, those three touchdowns could have been one touchdown and three picks because those were there were a couple passes where yeah, when he when he first huh. came in, he threw okay. he threw <laughs> a couple uh, passes. I get it, though he's a good leader, man. Like players yeah. like playing behind him, so who knows? Yep. And then David Montgomery, guys, is the running backs. 14 carries, 45 yards last week. Not his best week. The I would actively line, avoid him this week. Uh, uh, even even with the Tariq Cohen? Yeah, the yeah big it, time. I don't want him going up against Darius Leonard and matchup. DeForest Buckner and all them. No. Yeah, if the, if the Bears are going to win this game, I think, unfortunately, yeah. we're going to have to rely on Foles again. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah I know. saying we like, when we talk about the Bears. I, I, I don't know if we've said this on the podcast before, but obviously Ike and I are Bears fans. Yeah, you guys Plan are fans. Remember that. You're not re- you're not related to Virginia McCaskey. You have no part in this team. What's you don't that? know that, all right? I know I do know, know that. that. But uh, the, the wide receivers for the Bears, guys, Allen Robinson, he looks Yeah, with Nick Foles in the starting lineup, he's, yeah. he's wide receiver one material again. He, I know he had the one touchdown in there. He had a touchdown taken away. It was very borderline. He kind of it was an underthrown ball by Foles, and it kind of got ripped away by the defensive back in the end zone. Um, but Anthony Miller guys caught a touchdown late in the second half from Foles too. There was the game winning touchdown. Is Anthony? Can you start? No, Anthony Miller. Maybe a, may, uh, maybe a flex if you're desperate. 
because he was catching so much off-season hype, guys, and then it kind of fizzled. Kind of obviously caught a touchdown a week too. one. If he can... But if he, yeah, if. And then tight ends. <laughs> Jimmy Graham has three touchdowns already this Shut year, up. guys, and had two last week. He's he's streamable most weeks. No. This matchup's not a good one for him, though. So I'm uh, I'm avoiding Jimmy Graham this week. The Colts have been very good against opposing tight ends. He just gets the red zone targets. Did you know he, he leads the – well, he's tied for the uh, lead in red zone targets this year? That's wild. I believe it, man. We all we all picked on the Bears for doing that move, but it's clear for once that they actually have a plan to use to use him. Jumping over to the next game, guys, Jacksonville Jaguars at Cincinnati Bengals. Gardner Minshew last week struggled, and a ton of people picked him up to stream him in a great matchup that he had, including our uh, mm-hmm. my co-host here, Michael Plant, who uh, it, it was a little upset. Uh, weird, I would have told him not week. to play him. Only 10 fantasy points. Yeah, I like to chase the <laughs> matchups. I bit me in the ass. Just when, guys, when DJ Chark was out, I think it showed last week how big of a component DJ really- Chark is to this offense. Whether he, yeah, whether he's pulling coverages off of other guys or he's making plays in the offense himself, because I the, think he the just, offense just he, he takes the the double coverages. He, you know, he takes the top off the defense, I guess, and he's not even really the fastest guy. It's just he takes all the focus, which gives Gardner Minshew the. You know, middle of the field to work with the running backs to dump it down to. Yeah, yeah, and DJ should be back there. He actually will be back this weekend. They actually cleared him today, and he's off the injury report, so that'll be good for this Jacksonville offense. That's just in time. For that's this just great a good news in general. It's the Bengals. Yeah, but guys, the the wild news from that game was James Robinson having thirty fantasy points. Ike. Is James like we talked about Mike Davis earlier? Is James Robinson? Oh yeah, you got to start him though. In your lineup, he's getting you? all the touches. He's getting all the work. I know the whole argument this year was, you know, the reason they brought in, brought in Chris Thompson. He was going to handle all the passing work, but they're giving it all to Robinson. Robinson had six uh, six target or six receptions or six. He targets. had uh, one of the six. Uh, he's been playing really well. Six targets. He's got a. <laughs> Guys, I'm looking at our I'm looking at our fantasy six pack rankings right now. James Robinson's <laughs> RB twelve. It's a great matchup. <laughs> In this, only other matchup, matchup that could be better is, is them playing the Panthers. It is. Uh, we already touched on DJ Chark at the wide receiver position already, but Keelan Cole and Lavisca Chenault. Are they streamable in this matchup with DJ Chark? Yeah, in, in deeper leagues, probably. I don't. If you got a ten-team league, you probably got better options on the bench. But if you're desperate with, you know, the whole buy situation <laughs> with Pittsburgh and Tennessee, they're they're not bad options with the matchup. Uh, I, I, I feel like I would stay away with DJ Chark there. See what how it all shakes out. Could Hopefully be, yeah. DJ just gets some He's more due targets. for targets. So, so guys like me who were, yeah, guys like me who are extremely high on him, uh, get repaid because he, and isn't it like seven targets through his two yeah, games he's played? Great. Not good. Uh, Tyler Eifert, guys. So my up and down. He is up, versing his former I team, man. So you, who knows? Yeah. They might feed him, maybe. It could be. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. If you're into the revenge game stuff, you're playing, why not? This stuff happens. It's real, man. Let's uh, jump over to the Bengals now. Smoking Joe Burrow. Yeah. Let's go, guys. Yep. Fire him up yep. this week. Yep. Fire him up. This matchup is awesome. He, in our fantasy six-pack rankings, we ha- they have him as the 11th quarterback. Oh, LeBlanc, hi, yeah. are you cool I mean, firing him he, up this week, too? He's the second – um, his attempts for passing is the second in the league, only behind Dak Prescott. Like they're just—he's he's just chucking the ball. And I, if I set the over under for his pass attempts this week under at forty, would you go over? Or would you go under? They play. Jackson. I think they're gonna get Mixon more involved in the run game this time. Like, how many weeks in a row are man, you? Man, I sure as that? fuck hope so. This is the first one, I think. <laughs> Give me some Mixon. Please, 
uh, Zach I Taylor. The coach's Zach name. Kelly. Zach Kelly. Zach Kelly. That's not his name. I like Zach Kelly. Kelly. He'd probably Zach get Kelly. Who the hell is that? Yeah, he would. <laughs> Come, please. Yeah. Free it's getting a little Mixon. insane. Because it's 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 frustrating right now. Are you guys? Uh, we touched on him a little bit earlier, but are you guys still? Are you guys buying I'd Joe buying. Mixon or are you selling it? <sighs> He gets the volume, man. You like it's nice, but he's just not involved in the passing game. If they can get him involved in the passing game, he's he's worth buying low. This is a no, good but one, if guys. Have, but if you have the faith, he's worth answers. buying low. Rest, rest of the season, James, James Robinson, Robinson, Joe Mixon. Who yeah, I'm gonna have to say like James Robinson. Woo! Okay. Um. Wide receivers, A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, John Ross. I'd say the first two, A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, are startable. And T. Higgins I'd have to wait another week on week. T. Higgins for, ah, man, even though this is such a good matchup, if you're struggling at flex, you can you can probably pull it off. Yeah, the bright thing is to see that he, uh, he, he led Bengals receivers in routes ran last week, which means they're trying to get him involved. Yeah. And if A.J. Green keeps – disappointing who knows maybe a spot's gonna be taken doubtful but nine targets last week he yeah he's a target hog so far he just hasn't been producing <laughs> who also has a target hog since he's been in the lineup is drew sample having uh <coughs> i want to say it's like 17 targets drew through three sample. games right LaPlante? he's got 11 or through through two no, games no, through two games 10 now you got one week okay whoop de do. But didn't yeah, he, and then only did one have, in didn't week he have three. Nine though. week two, he well, caught it though. Hundred percent catch rate. That, so, uh... Nice. Positive. <laughs> no. Tight ends catching all the balls. Nice. Well, let's uh, jump over to another Ohio team: Cleveland Browns at the Dallas Cowboys. I'm and... pretty excited for this game, guys. I'm. Uh... I don't know. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I just like watching both. I just like both. <laughs> I just like watching. <laughs> I just like watching both of these teams and like seeing what what Baker Mayfield we get every week. Bad Baker, good Baker. This uh, this week, I think we might see good Baker. Can he play Dallas in a Cowboys shootout? Though? Defense is dog. I think so against this defense. He's got to make some Dallas throws. Defense dog shit. Yeah, Dallas defense is not. Kareem good. Hunt might not be playing. He's got a growing injury. He's questionable. I think uh, I he think didn't this... practice Wednesday or Thursday and was limited today. I know this is weird to say, but I think this might be a breakout game for ODB. It could be. It very well could be. Or Jarvis. Jarvis could get see a decent amount of targets. Odell will probably get the big play. I wouldn't even be surprised if Kareem Hunt don't play that they use Nick Chubb in the passing game because he is capable of catching. Oh yeah, it. for sure. Use, Who yeah, knows? Maybe Austin Hooper game. breaks out. But that'll if Kareem Hunt if Kareem hunts out this week, guys. I think Nick Chubb is probably a top. I almost put him top six five, running back, top right? three man. He's gonna get tons of tons of carries. Yeah, th- this might be a game where the, they just might use the pass to get down to the red zone and then run it in with Chubb. Yeah, he. he I wouldn't be surprised if he gets three touchdowns in this game. Yeah, that'd be stupid. And then uh, we touched on the wide receivers. Yeah, yeah. Start, start both of them. You can but start, I both, go any start both of them. Start both of them. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, well, what about either of the tight ends? Austin Hooper is not seen. A His lot targets of are going Harrison up, though, Bryant for Austin caught Hooper. Caught a touchdown at least. last week. I mean, I mean yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> not by but, much. Yeah. He, he he got two the first week, four the second week, and, <laughs> and four last week. So but all there is is but up. Yeah. And he is talented. Yeah. So it's coming up. <laughs> yeah, we've seen it last year in Atlanta. He is talented. Who knows, man? Jump into the Cowboys next. He's yeah, a clear Chris starter. What, what can we say? Yep. He, yeah, he's, he's plug it and play every For week. Me. And some good news I saw today. This is for the whole offense, and this helps Dak on it, his blind side and helps Zeke in the running that game. Is good. It sounds like Tyrone Smith is yeah, going to play. Yeah. So that's it. 
that should help the offense. Zeke struggled a little bit last week. Good thing he uh, got in the end zone to save his fantasy week. And then for wide receivers for Dallas. Amari New addition, Cedric Wilson and now. And Cedric Wilson caught some passes. Yeah, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't count on that performance well, week in and out. He, are you guys a little down on Amari Cooper since it, he'll be in uh, facing Denzel Ward? You know, in, in previous years, or I you would think say Amari yes. But he, it seems like this year he took a step forward. Like he he did well against Jalen Ramsey, and he's assumedly the best you know cornerback in the league. So Denzel Ward shouldn't be too big of a problem. I think I, I think you start off three, like obviously. Week. CD Lamb flex worthy for sure. I yeah. I I had this talk with Ike outside of the podcast. I think Michael Gallup's gonna be one of those players. It's gonna be in every other week for him. So I, I honestly think it's gonna be CD Lamb's this this week. And then CD Lamb plays in the slot. So yeah, we can we, we can see a lot of targets. Their slot corner is not great. Yeah, you're probably going up against like Greedy Williams or something like that if you're lucky. <laughs> Moving over to tight ends, Dalton Schultz made my streaming tight end uh, article back to back weeks just because of the fact the sheer volume. Yeah, I'm going to have to apologize to this man. Great uh, I, I said he was pretty garbage in one of our earlier podcasts. And I, he made me my words. He's actually been catching the ball like he's supposed to lately. <laughs> They're letting J- Dak chuck it, so I start Agreed. everyone in this offense. Yes, sir. Hey, jump into the next game: New Orleans Saints at Detroit Lions. And Drew Brees, guys, struggling a little bit. This was uh, one of my good calls so far. Do you think he's startable against this uh... bad Lions defense? I don't think so. I give him one more week. This is the week he needs to perform to stay uh, as, like, even remotely a starting quarterback. If he does bad, bye bye. Yeah, this if if he doesn't produce this week, he's definitely bench worthy. So he like you have him as a sell actually, then, huh? Or would you take him as a buy? Man, I don't know if you're gonna be able to get much trade value for him to be honest. Yeah, I think, um, I think with Michael Thomas coming back, he actually may. Yeah, we'll have to see how it turns out. A for buy sure. right now, because he he's got Detroit this week. That he plays the Chargers in Week Five. That's a little tough. Then he's got a buy in Week Six. That he gets Carolina, Chicago, Tampa Bay, San Francisco. Mm, so maybe not. His schedule is actually a little rough. See, I don't know if most people know Carolina this either, game. but Drew Brees actually has one of those uh, home road splits like Big Ben used to. He actually, I think he, what did I see? It was like five less fantasy points on the road he scores compared to being at the Superdome. Not surprised. I don't know if the game plan just changes or if, you know, he's just not throwing as much. Half the time he's not in the dome anymore, so he's outside. Nah. And even when he is throwing it, yeah. it's going four <laughs> yards past the line of scrimmage yeah. to Alvin Kamara That's because a good he's an player. absolute beast. <laughs> the guys, he's, in my opinion, he, he's going to be running back one at the end of the year. I know we've talked about this on the podcast before. When uh, Ike and I did the first podcast, when we um, drafted our team that one week, we drafted Alvin Kamara over Zeke, which not a lot of people do. And so, so far, so Do good, you think he's, he's the best all-around stud. running back in the game right now? No, I don't think he's a good enough runner in all honesty. He's more of the pass catching back. He is so honest, hard to what, like what has he really done on the ground this year, right? Break down for as like a running back. It's so weird because his receiving game is clearly his best asset, but you just don't see enough of the running for him to say he is the best runner. You know what I mean? Yeah. But with the ball in his hands yards, and him actually like rough. running the ball, if it's off a catch or whatever, he is so hard to take down and he takes like the best angles. It's just, I don't, it's 
he's so hard to break. It's weird. It's hard to break down. Yeah. Like last week against the Packers, he only had six yeah. attempts, but he had 58 yards and he averaged 9.7 <laughs> yards in attempt. Um, guys, but what you look at for Kamara <laughs> is eight targets, nine targets, and then last week, 14 insane, targets man. and he caught. You guys are like him. trying it's to cover insane. him and it, he, they just can't. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> he, he, he is second in the league in receptions, like total wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, only behind DeAndre Hopkins. That's Hopkins, wild. Hopkins has 32 catches and then Alvin Kamara has 27 <laughs> and the next highest is Amari Cooper with 25. Jeez. That is mind blowing. Think about that. that he's, is, he's a wide receiver one yeah, in a running back crazy. position. That, yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, we don't like Calvin. <laughs> yeah, Kamara. we just Sorry went. About that. We just loved him there. That we just had. <laughs> but uh, guys, I'm actually had to start Latavius Murray this week in a league because of the Titans. Steelers game being postponed, and I lost Derrick Henry. Does that suck for me starting Latavius w- Murray this week? Or do you I think wouldn't say it sucks. It's, you're role, not in a great position, a but the bright side is if the Saints get in the red zone, man, I mean, like we talked about it, they're not really using Alvin Kamara. No, no, tackle. you're that bullshit. Alvin Kamara is getting all the red zone. He's gotten two goal. I'm pretty sure he's gotten all the goal line carries. Latavius Murray just somewhat gets him down there. You, you just, Does Latavius know. Murray have a touchdown in the year? Yeah, Kamara's got it. He does not. It's Kamara's, it man. That's right now. Was, that's yeah. finally the plan you said it because I was just going to say without Latavius Murray attempts. getting the goal line work, he's why even start him, you know? I'm thinking you could start him this yeah. week because the Saints should be controlling this game. And I feel like with the way that they use Kamara in the passing game, I think they're going to give Murray a lot of attempts on the ground, which hopefully result in a little bit of red zone work. But I, I, he had, Kamara has definitely taken all the red zone work so far. But Murray's at 15 yeah. attempts week one, three attempts week two, but then 12 again last week against the Packers. So with Michael Thomas being out again, I think that they're going to try to control the game a little bit. Yeah, more you're going to see on like the ground, especially hopefully in the Saints' the road, favor, they're in you know? a winning or positive game strip. But you're going to see what we saw last week, where Kamara will get a lot of targets, Murray will do most of the stuff on the running game, and then maybe Traquan Smith or Emmanuel Sanders with a little bit of targets too. Yeah, oh, guys, uh, real quick, so we can j- move on to the Lions. Are you starting any of the pass catchers in the Saints? Michael Thomas is out. Jared Cook's out. Anybody, Manny Sanders, Traquan Smith, Deontay Harris. If you have Adam to, Trump, Emmanuel any Sanders. Of them. Yep, but, but I wouldn't be thrilled about it. Somebody's got to catch the ball besides Alvin Kamara. They can't just throw okay. it to him every single Yeah, time. right. Let's move on to the Lions now. Matthew Stafford, kind of a tough, uh, tough matchup a little bit for him this week. Is he startable, you guys think, or not? Ah, uh, no, not for me. Our fantasy six pack rankings have him as a borderline quarterback. One, he is the twelfth quarterback right I don't now. Know. I feel like, like it, it could be there? a what pretty good game. It could be high scoring. So I mean, if you need a quarterback, like Big Ben's out, obviously Tannehill's out because of the COVID stuff. So I mean, you can take a shot on him. Yeah, and the Saints have been successful. It's true. Uh, they have given up Raiders. a lot of points. The Packers scored 37 points on them last week. Yeah, so the only, their defense is the only struggling benefit a, is that, a little uh, bit. He will be playing from behind. Um, Maybe. They look a little rough. Yeah, the Saints, man. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> um, running backs, guys. Stay away. Just stay show away. That is. <laughs> Adrian Peterson leads the team in touches one week. Then it's DeAndre Swift. Then it's on Johnson. It's like, Matt Patricia, eat shit, man. Give a, Why are you drafting DeAndre Swift if you're That's not what I don't understand. And you're using 35-year-old Adrian Peterson. Why draft him? It's great. You're drafting him for the next I don't coach. know. If, if that's the next coach, probably throw. I don't know if he's getting fired. At some point. 
If Adam Gase isn't getting fired, what makes you think that he's getting fired? What'd you say, LaPlante? Sorry. Detroit doesn't care, man. They'll send you out whenever. <laughs> Adam Gase New York's more like, eh, I don't know if we should, man. <laughs> but, but, guys, you can't – don't start any of these running backs unless you're desperate. It's completely annoying. Um, are you starting Kenny Galladay against Marshawn Lattimore this week? He – Lattimore is kind of getting beat. I wouldn't up, mind starting. Ken- obviously, bit, you're starting Kenny Galladay. There's no chance you're taking him out of your lineup because you draft him early. Like Alan Lazard. Yeah, I mean, a Kenny times, needs like, to have a big game. So what? Hopefully, Lattimore. he can have one against the Saints here. That help a lot of fantasy owners. I'd like to see that. And then, uh, so is Marvin with Kenny back in and Marvin Jones not being the number yeah. one? Do you think he's yeah. he cannot cut it as number one? Yes, clearly. Now, or uh, okay. I think- Agreed. I'd Agreed. actually be so starting him over. You'd Kenny be okay Galladay starting week, him as that's a just oh. plan. You still start Kenny Galladay, but yeah, I get you. But Marvin Jones isn't going to be shadowed by Marshawn Lattimore. Okay. And that for tight ends, I've guys, been TJ burned Hawkins, by him so like many him. times, but you, he's just you, so talented. <laughs> he, they call him Baby Gronk. Just I don't know when we're going to see it. Yeah. yeah, he's got 16 targets on the year, and he got seven last week, even with Kenny Galladay in the line. And he's caught most of them, if not all. 81.2 catch rate. Nice. Yeah, and that with, with tight ends, yeah, perhaps you, for sure. If you're getting that many targets through three games, you're pretty much a top ten tight end. So that pretty much that does it for that. I game. guess if you're gonna pull my, you want to start running through a few of these games. All right. I, all right, jumping over the next game preview. We got the Minnesota Minnesota Vikings against the Houston. Good start. Hey, man. <laughs> Leave me be. Hey, man. Uh, hey, uh, man. Don't do time. it like hey, that. Hey, we got man. a first timer over hey, here. Man, let's talk about Kirk Cousins. I mean, Houston. who are they playing? The matchup. Yeah, the it's, matchup it's is probably sexy. one of the best matchups he's going to get Texans. all year. <laughs> but he's got to throw. That defense is not great, so the volume's there. I know he's not that great, but, I mean, if you're a volume chaser like me, he's worth a streaming thought. I'm sure you would stream him. No. <laughs> I'm actually going with Jared Goff this week for my streaming <laughs> option. There you go. But, uh, so we start in Kirk Cousins? Yes, no? I don't want him. All right. Uh-uh. Not after he burned people a few weeks ago against the Colts when he threw three picks. Last week he threw another two picks. I'm out. He's just happy to throw three touchdowns. So all right, uh, one it's of three a juicy matchup, guys. Going but, to uh, start him this week. <laughs> Moving on to the running backs, Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison, who is non-existent in this offense at this point. So you know, do we even need to talk about Dalvin Cook? He's pretty much startable. Obviously a starter, week. yeah. Maybe even start him in the bye week. He's so good. <laughs> Top five right uh, okay. <laughs> What? <laughs> that should have been reserved for Alvin Kamara of all it's people. A, it's a chill. <laughs> Calm down. We had enough love on Alvin Kamara. We can. Nah, I don't think share. we had enough. We can. This share. is an Alvin Kamara love move, podcast. All right. Move, moving on. <laughs> Let's talk about these receivers. <laughs> and uh, I mean, obviously the the breakout receiver last week, Justin Jefferson. I can't remember the exact stat line. I want to say it was seven receptions for 175 and a touchdown. I mean, you know, you're starting Thielen. Uh, is Justin Jefferson? <laughs> is Justin Jefferson Jefferson worth I'm a flex play this week? Feeling. Yes, this matchup. This is a perfect game for him to totally Texas bust Texas for you guys. I'm started. not gonna lie. You think it's? A, you think I'd it's be so game? scared to start him. It was one game where he maybe. did something. Maybe, but let's maybe. Let's I I would go. avoid guys. Let's I, do it. Uh, I would avoid it. Chase that upside. Oh Before man, you agree my, with me? my heart says yes. My brain says no. I I like the kid. He's first round talent, and he's gonna get the second cornerback in this matchup because Adam Thielen's obviously gonna draw the number one cornerback. <laughs> I, I, I don't, who are the corners in Houston? <laughs> that's a good question. I, that is a very good question. Sweet, he, man. Is he healthy, though? Gary on Connolly is one of them, right? 
Sure. So well, we I mean, go ahead, go ahead, speed us up, Laplant. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't even think Justin Jefferson's going to get 175 yards, but he's going to get volume cool. this week. So I'd, I'd start him in a flex, and I'm, I'm guessing you guys would too. But you're right. No. Perfect game for him to bust for everybody who's no, just about to start no, him after coming I, off I one good yes. game. That's fair. That, I win. We'll see after this two week. On, All right. Two on one. Math. Like you lose. Like, like, like Dylan said. <laughs> Tight ends, <laughs> not worth a start. Either one, Kyle Rudolph or Smith Jr. They just haven't seen enough volume, so we're gonna just let Irv Smith be the starter. Like, come on, he's better. We all know it. I don't, I don't know. Can he make that one-handed catch, Kyle Rudolph got? And, he right, can make that right. no-handed yes. catch. <laughs> I'm Look, kidding. Let's play football, with no hands. <laughs> all right, let's go out of the quarterback for the Houston Texans, Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Uh, the first three weeks have been rough for him, but he, he had to play the Chiefs, the Ravens, and the Steelers. Now he finally gets a good matchup in the Minnesota Vikings. You think he goes off this week? Go for it. You want to hear my bold prediction? Ike, how you feel about Sean that? Scott Watson, quarterback one this Like week. the number one quarterback altogether? I, I think he can be in the top 12. I don't think he'll be number one. Yes, sir. Wow. How what, but what do you mean? He, he is not getting nobody is guaranteed top his twelve. Floor, right? His floor is good, it, you, great with the running. No, 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 my, why is this <laughs> weird though? It's usually uh, Ike and I who is agreeing. We got a point. Yeah, good juju I, in the air. So I don't really know how I feel about so, this. So moving on to the running back, Keep David Johnson. Along. Like I said with Deshaun Watson, he's <laughs> had a rough matchup for the past three games. I mean, he gets to play Minnesota Vikings, and I, I think personally it's going to be a shootout. I'm going to be starting David Johnson this week, and I think he could honestly, he has a ceiling for running back one. Uh, you guys, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think you're going to agree. What with are me. you guys, what is happening? Are you guys telling me right now that Deshaun Watson has possibly be number one quarterback and then you just told me David Johnson could be the number one running back? No, not number one. I mean like an RB1. Like, okay. I'm, I was about to freak out. I'm like, am I losing my no, mind? Are we no, in no, like no, 2016? This is <laughs> RB1 will probably be Alvin Kamara. I just can't. I can't believe the hate that you're <laughs> giving Deshaun right now. Like, weeks, man. I just don't think he can be a quarterback. One, I'm a little disappointed, God, like, you, pal. I know Patrick Mahomes. This he is, but for you one, can't. Russell, which we're getting to next, plays Miami. <laughs> so there's that. Ru or Lamar plays Washington football you, team. You, you want to talk about trap games? I'm thinking Russell Wilson against Miami. Are like, you high right now? Are you shitting me? You gotta be kidding me with that. You don't want me to answer that question, honestly. Uh, hold on. Let let's wait. Let's wait to let's wait to get to Seattle next. Let's move on to the wide receivers. <laughs> Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, Randall Cobb. <laughs> I, I don't, since you're I don't think he needs the answer. I think we know the answer. <laughs> For one, Will Fuller is so inconsistent, but his targets will be there. I'm assuming you guys are gonna start him because he's the number one. I'd be scared to start Cooks and Cobb. Yeah, Will Fuller, uh, he's probably yeah. the only one I'm comfortable starting. <sighs> yeah. Out of the pass catchers. Yeah, Will Fuller hesitantly. But Laplan, how about you? And then, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> picking uh, the right tight end. Uh, let me save you the trouble. Bullshit. Avoid it. In this offense. So let's move on to our next game then. Seattle Seahawks yeah. at Miami Dolphins. Michael Plan's bust of the century here. Here we go. Awesome. Let's let uh, you two. I'd love to hear it because all I gotta say is what he did to the Patriots. The what, how, how, how can he not do that to the Dolphins? Oh, he's definitely capable of doing it to the Dolphins. It's just, I think, I don't, I mean, as much as I love this uh, Seattle team, I don't think the Dolphins can keep up. And if they can't keep up, what, why is Russell gonna keep throwing? Clearly, he's on a mission this year, if you haven't noticed. I mean, I do think he's going to get another four touchdowns probably, but 
maybe on 28 pass attempts. Bust of the century. I mean, but <laughs> you, you just kind of eat your words a little bit. He's got four quarterback one. He's, four he's touchdowns got, he's got 14 him, uh, touchdowns for three weeks. That's, uh, that's uh, a record, man. I mean. He is ridiculous. I just, I'm just saying. He's going to be the MVP. This, this is a possible trap we game. We talked about I mean, that on the podcast think as well. Keep the right? Dolphins <laughs> present no evidence for it to be a trap game, though. I, I could see. The one person they see. stopped was Gardner, and Russell is leaps and bounds miles galaxies ahead of him i'm just saying that it's going to be a, a negative a positive game script for the seahawks and they might try to run the ball a little bit more i get what you're saying to an extent laplant i'm going to be the the deciding factor here i get what you're saying a little bit but i think i'm going to have to agree with ike because the running backs are banged up in Seattle. The Gator well. roll, that was Chris Carson is questionable after that cheap shot that he took in the Dallas game. And that Carlos Hyde is also questionable. So you might be looking at Travis Homer as the running back. So obviously yeah, he's not going to sure. get a ton of time. But I don't think they're going to be they rushing him out 20 Carson times with that knee injury. Yeah. Um, Definitely, yeah. Not. He's probably yeah, I gonna get under ten. We wouldn't start guess, Chris Carson this week him if he plays. Yeah, I think I think we can agree probably yeah. that if you do if have you to start him, please hope for a to touchdown Carson, or something. It'd be a good idea, which he could do. Yeah, he could. But uh, let's let's talk about the flashy yeah. part of this offense: the wide receivers, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, and start not so both, for sure. You start David Moore though. You think he's going to flex play? Uh, no, no. It seems to go all the lock in DK. No, okay. not yet. Moving nah, on then, because those nah. guys are obvious starts. Uh, Greg Olson. He seems. Yep. I mean, he had that one mistake the week before against the Patriots, but he seemed to. They seem to have forgotten. Which could have cost him. That mistake probably pissed off Russell quite a bit. <laughs> Unfor- <laughs> Unfortunately. You never see Russ mad, man. He's such a nice guy. Yeah. But they got three or four of them. Like Jacob Howell, they're still touch, there. Touchdown every week. So uh, th- yeah. this. Yeah. Th- if if, this if you have to start one, who are you starting? Greg Olson or Will so Disley? It's kind of a stay Olson. away, too. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Fitz ah, Magic. Greg, yeah. The Seattle Seahawks defense lets quarterbacks throw all over him. Is he worth a streaming option this week? I know I said he is. I'm probably going to have the to Seahawks the can't. Again. You can keep going, my bad. He could be a top 12 quarterback this week just because the uh, <laughs> is top 12 match. <laughs> top 12 quarterback this week because the matchup's awesome. Jamal, Jamal Adams is out. You also said LaPlan earlier off in the pre show. Uh, yeah, Quentin Dunbar. Or in the pre talk. That's not good for us. Who'd you say was out? Quentin Dunbar, Dunbar, right? They can't pass no, it's not. for but, uh, the lights of them either. So yeah, I'd be week, uh, I'd be confident in Fitzpatrick. Yeah. So does that mean we're uh, with all the passing work that Miles Gaskin is seeing? Are we going to start him then this week? Uh, is, I'm is, still is, not high on Gaskin, me, uh, but he's seeing yeah, all the touches. Let me make it easier reason, for you, except for goal line. Flex play. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I would have to agree with you. It sucks that yeah, Jordan Howard keeps, yeah. you know, vulturing the touchdowns in this. And he will continue uh, to do that. Yes. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you yep. could tell there's a clear role, just like the Jimmy Graham. Red what did Breda do? Bears, there's a clear what did he do to get Jordan into Howard's the dark house or something? He just lost it, everything. So. He was uh, so good last year. I was... I was listening to a podcast, and I unfortunately don't remember who said this, so I can't credit them, but uh, they made a good point. This is kind of going back to our Bears bias, but what do you think about Matt Breida being in the contract I would here and him fully being endorse traded that. The Bears I would love to that. Tariq Cohen I would have to agree with it, but unfortunately they signed Lamar Miller today to their practice quest. I don't know if that's in their future. Oh, boy. 
But the one thing I'll have to say about Miles Gaskin is he has Ugh. a little bit of uh, the Clyde Edwards Hilaire syndrome. He's just too small to get in the end zone, I think. So uh, with the news of the uh, cornerback being out, That's fair. Seattle and Jamal Adams being out, obviously we're probably going to start Devontae Parker. Mm. Um, do, do, do we yeah, like Preston White? Good. I like Devontae Parker. Glad I like this matchup. I love yeah. Preston Williams, but unfortunately, he's disappointed me all season. He caught a touchdown so last little, week against the Jaguars. A little sour at him, but maybe this could be the week. It was. I mean, he Mike did. Evans Wasn't had two catches catch? for two, two Gesicki. yards. Gesicki. <laughs> That's not so I mean, Beggars can't be choosers. I just, I just don't think, I just don't think Williams is. I agree. He's not a start yet. I think he's the volume's there this week, and he's worth a me, look at the flex, uh, flex position, but that's probably it. So uh, let's move on to the, the slot the slot receiver in this offense. Yeah. Mike, just uh, – do we start him this week? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, obviously. All right. I mean, that was simple. So let's, He's the uh, red zone yeah. target too, yep. it seems like. Yep. Devontae. He's got hands, man. I love watching it. I love watching him play, yeah, he's, guys. He, yeah, with the tight end so position being me. crap, he, he's he he's so fun good. to watch. So moving on to the next game, we got the Los Angeles Chargers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I personally think Justin Herbert's going to start. Do you guys think that too, or do you think Tyrod's going to be coming back this week? It'd be wild for them to go back to Tyrod Taylor, but hopefully. Yeah, it's it was fair. against the bank. I mean, he did win that. It is a win. Win wins a win. Year, man. Yeah, I agree. It, yeah. Justin but Herbert's in. We're purposes, starting off in Eckler. Uh, Either way, Eckler's being a starter. Uh, yeah, Eckler's a starter no yeah. matter what. But it probably between an RB1 and an RB2. Depending on yeah, which with Herbert in, is. I think that's he's kind of double what you're digit going targets, for, right? What do you said that right, Laplant? But uh, then yeah. we're also probably going to start Keenan Allen. What did he see? Nineteen targets in this last game with Herbert at quarterback. That's just insane. So we're start we're <laughs> okay. starting him. I mean, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Un- yeah, it's a, it's a little tougher of a matchup this week. Tampa Bay. I'm a volume chaser, so 19 Ooh. targets is hard to hard to turn away from. I how do you feel? As long as Herbert's playing, I'd be putting Keenan Allen yep. in my lineups. Obviously. Great. Now the the tough option in this offense because obviously we're starting Hunter Henry. Also, do we uh, do we consider Mike Williams a flex option this week? Love that guy. I'd like to see more from him before I even think about it. Yeah, if if Tyrod was in, I'd go with Mike Williams in this situation. He's too big play dependent and not enough targets. No, not. I don't know. I don't get it. He's don't, they so just don't talented, use him right. guys, but he, ah, he he just can't. He yeah, he just can't. He reminds bust out. He reminds me of a guy we're gonna talk he about. Reminds me of Joe Mixon too. Just not being used right. Waiting for yeah. a bust out too. But uh, moving on to uh, the next team in this matchup, Tom Brady. Uh, this is a tough Charger secondary, even without Derwin James. Uh, we've said this before. Is I- I'm gonna be benching Tom Brady this week. What do you guys think? He has good success against the Chargers usually. I mean, yeah, that I was with the Patriots, though, fantasies. so it could be completely different. Leonard Fournette's been ruled out with an ankle injury. Chris Godwin's out with a hamstring injury. Scotty Miller's questionable. I mean, with this tough secondary, I mean, and the lack of weapons, you you want to start him? You might be out of options if you have Big Ben or uh, Ryan Tannehill or something like that. So I mean, it wouldn't be the worst option out there. But uh, all right, then I'm. If you're desperate, we're going to yeah. start him. Sure, not, yeah. Find other options. I want to mention this, guys, real quick, that if uh, if so- if somebody in your league puts Brady on the trading block or if somebody happens to release him, he plays the Bears in week five, 
But then it gets real good for a stretch of five games. He gets Green Bay. He gets the Raiders. He gets the Giants. Yeah, you can maybe try and get Chris Godwin off some owners because he's now injured and hasn't necessarily, except for the first week, been performing. Maybe he can be a buy low type of guy for you guys. Yeah, but uh, we're going to move on to the running back then. Uh, Since news of Leonard Fournette being out, I'm thinking Ronald Jones is a a must-start this week. What do you think, Ike? That's a yes from Dylan. Rojo he guy. had his time last year, and he was okay. So I'm I start him <laughs> since there's nobody else there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. No. no midweek. Yeah, no for that. They, that was they might just be uh, really being cautionary. Them, so you know, could be popped up by playing. They they're yeah. probably looking long run. So moving on to the wide receivers, uh, Mike Evans. I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. The craziest stat line last week, two catches, two yards, and two touchdowns. <laughs> He's on pace for like 20 first plus week, touchdowns. Man, he had one reception for I think it's clear what his role is in this like offense. That. Which we all kind of figured, I feel like. Yeah. Well, he is a... It, Yes, and he was the deep. Yeah. He's the deep threat, obviously. Unless, but the, time, unless the Buccaneers are time in negative game scripts, but they got to pass it. So. I mean, Mike Evans is really only going to be using the red zone in my eyes. I was going to say you're at the volume. I'm not a fan. Fans, so you, I mean, because uh, you probably hate Mike Evans, huh? I'm not either, in all honesty. But, he was on my do not draft list this yep. offseason. The only reason I'm a volume chaser is because you just can't sustain Chris touchdowns. Can't it's healthy. just it's you'd like to think it, but you can't. And volume Volume's just there. That's a <laughs> That's a fact. Alan Camaro. I guess that Except I guess that accounts Tyler when Rocket. you know you don't even have He's a cornerback five yards <laughs> in your area in the red zone, which is just blasphemous. <laughs> True, <laughs> guys. We had a Grok sighting last week. Almost, unfortunately, Tom I'm gonna him. just save you the trouble so we can just move <laughs> along here. The Avoid the tight zone. ends. Uh, there's not been enough evidence of any clear number one tight end in this offense. So we're gonna move on to our next game: the Baltimore yeah, Ravens at the Washington Football Team. Lamar Jackson's been having a rough year. Uh, obviously, we're starting him. You just drafted him way too early in the year. So, and this this is a tough front six for the Washington football team. But Lamar Jackson's going to get it done, and I I think you guys are going to agree with me on that one. Yeah, I'd be starting him for sure. Yeah, he'll be he'll be okay. Um, Kyler killed. Washington when they played him. I agree. So well, let's move on to the shit show. With the running ability. The running so backs. Uh, Mark Ingram, J.K. Dobbins. I would Edwards. avoid all of them, unfortunately. I, I agree. Yeah, I just got one little question. Who do you think it's going to be this week, though, if you had to pick one of the three? Uh, Mark Ingram. Don't. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to take J.K. Dobbins. <laughs> Gus Edwards, because they're going to soak this game away. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're doing as much as them. We're not helping we anybody. Help they're not helping anybody. That. So we're going to move on to the wide receivers. Marquise uh, Hollywood Brown, as Dylan likes to call him. <laughs> this is the guy I was talking about earlier What I said, talking about a breakout for the next yeah, game. If- Can it please happen? And this is the prime if, matchup for it to happen. Washington has no corner. Hey, Hollywood. Hollywood yeah, is we're awesome. going to start him this week. Please, Hopefully, man, this is his breakout play, week. Because if this is breakout week, we're going to feel more confident starting him next week. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. So, moving on yes. to the, wide, the receiver, wide receiver 1B start, in this offense, Mark Andrews. Uh, He's been disappointing this uh, year so far, I mean, besides week one. Are you guys confident in starting him this week? Oh, yeah. All right. He's still probably the – honestly, he probably is the number one option. Yep. I Keep rolling him out. Agreed. 
So we're going to move on to uh, the quarterback for the Washington football team, Dwayne Haskins. Avoid. We don't have to do anything. Just please move on. No, we don't need it. Let's just talk. We should probably mention Antonio Gibson. He he can probably be worth a flex, maybe. I mean, his matchup's even not great. If... He gets a lot of pass catching. Negative game. He is the best pass catching back. Because they're going to be down by JD McKissick. Actually, I don't see it happening very often. But if just if the Washington football team can in the red zone, he's going to get the touches. Agreed. I'd be scared. Shitless starring him. Yes. So So it's a that's a risky scare. This Baltimore defense is no joke. But uh, like Dylan said, Terry McLaurin, uh, he's questionable this week. He popped up on the injury report. Weird. With this tough matchup and him being questionable, is he worth starting this week? Or are you guys He's probably going to have uh, Marlon Humphrey on him, too. Yeah. I mean. Start. You still, I think you're still. He's playing. definitely. He'll get the target. Starter, I agree. Because he's the best option in this offense, guys. He's he, he yeah he's he's been yeah producing. so many targets Another from Tanks, but he has literally has done nothing with it. Is the tight end Hopefully. Logan Thomas? I wouldn't be starting him. Hopefully, hopefully yeah, Dwayne Haskins you know takes those two touchdowns in my last week and, you know weeks. gives one to Logan Thomas, maybe one to Terry McLaurin. That'd be nice. Be nice. So we're gonna move on to the next game then, the New York Giants at the Los Angeles yeah. Rams. Uh, as Ike likes to say, Matthew Berry's ride or die. Daniel Jones. Hmm. We're, we're benching Weird, him this week, right? Yeah. I don't want anybody from this offense. This offense is broken. It's broken, guys. No. It's unfortunate. The Saquon injury. Daniel Jones is, is hosed. Can't stop turning the ball over. Yeah. The Rams team. Lot better than everyone thought they were going to be. Can I make yes. a? They're going to make a bold, gonna, you know, uh, suggestion about this team that struggle. I hope you guys agree on. Uh, I I would only be starting Evan Ingram this week. It he he does, but if if there was ever a week, this would be the week for him he to break stinks out. Too Tyler Croft last week, you know, the backup tight end for the Buffalo Bills caught two touchdowns against the Rams. I think the middle of the field, you could beat the Rams and and. Mm-hmm. Evan Ingram could eat this week, but then again. question could... is, will he have time? Aaron Donald's going to be breathing down the neck of Daniel Jones every play. I wouldn't be surprised if we see double-digit targets for Evan Ingram, but he'd be the only one for me personally starting out yeah. of this offense. I don't even know if he's ever had double-digit targets before. Would be you nice. Guys, it would, would be you, nice. Would you guys be starting anybody out of this offense this week? Nope. All right, moving on to the Los Angeles Rams. Jared Goff. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, but like the main guys, you can pretty much like start every Henderson, Woods, office, Cup, Higby. Don't be that guy that starts Cam Akers. Take him out of your lineup. He's, he's hurt. Don't be starting Malcolm Brown either. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. No, Daryl Henderson's the guy now for a while as long as Cam Akers is hurt. Malcolm yeah, Brown's getting he's the better touches, runner anyway. He's a little banged up himself. We're, so. we're starting Robert Woods. We like we're Darryl starting Henderson. Cooper Cup. Yep. Uh, I stay away from Van Jefferson and Josh Reynolds unless you're desperate. This is just a good matchup for him, but there's other options probably. And Tyler Higby, you guys starting? Yeah. All right. So paid off, man. Yeah, yeah, so far, so good. So uh, we're going to move on to our next game then. Was worth it, the New England like, Patriots yep. at the Kansas City Chiefs. This is uh, potential for a good game here. We got uh, Cam Newton for the Patriots. Uh, you think you're starting him this week against the Chiefs? I have a feeling he might struggle. Mm. It's tough, man. Yeah, you it's think, gonna be a lot of yeah, running. Yeah, I think this is gonna actually gonna be a slower paced game than you keep would think. Mahomes off the field. I think, I think Belichick's gonna try and control this game on the ground. Yeah, keep Mahomes off the field. I, I, Cam's I, rushing floor <laughs> might make him have a decent day. Yeah, he had a rough but, uh, uh, rough game last if you week. You could avoid um, him. I would try personally. To. I think 
the addition of James White back in the lineup this week, they might be a little bit more prone to throwing the ball now that they got another, you know, weapon to use. But that's I would, just me. I would honestly start Fitzpatrick over him, I think. Let me ask you. I yes, was just going to ask, for sure. would, would you yes. guys How about start, Fitzy, though? Start Jared start Jared I would, too. Start Jared Goff I would too. Cam this week. Cam is our uh, fantasy six pack. Has Cam as our the ninth quarterback. Fitzpatrick at fifth. I'd have to disagree. I'd go uh, Cam. Yeah, I just I think Bill Belichick. Uh, too, as man. much as he wants to control the game, Patrick Mahomes is just going to take over. That's me though. So we start in James White though. Sonny Michelle, Rex Burkhead after his three touchdown games. Sure, Any sure. of these guys you want to start besides? No, not even James White. I don't, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do because they're going to nope. obviously get Burkhead in the passing game now, they're which takes away from James White. Backfield. Yeah. And Sonny Michelle, I don't think anybody has started ever yet. Yeah, we should uh, wait a, maybe a week or two more to see if uh, it is James White backfield or something. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even Damian Harris when he comes back. Which is supposed to be this week or next week, right? And All that's right, not nice. sure. Wide receivers for the New England Patriots. Uh, we're starting Julian Edelman or to kill Harry out of this matchup. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Edelman is hopefully as your wide receiver three and Henry Harry. Yeah. Um, uh, I, mean, I would not be starting to kill Harry. I don't want. I, mean, I don't, don't want to him. start that. I <laughs> That's gonna be because. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why? If you say so. <laughs> keep this, Julian Edelman's the only guy I want to start <laughs> Nah, leave him alone. Yes. I will have to give you props. No, Ryan though, for, is or you know, Devin Asiasi, Asiasi, right? guys. I think, I think we can move on to the. Asiasi. <laughs> so, moving on to the automatic start of the week, probably every week. Uh, Patrick Mahomes. Good, automatic start. Huge. Yeah, j- j- just limit your expectations, though, guys. Probably. I don't know, man. Be, uh, he uh, he torched that Ravens defense, be, and yeah, New England's defense doesn't look like one guy. I don't think you know last year's defense. So I think it's possible. <sighs> All right, we'll leave it at that. Be- <laughs> Clyde edwards Hilaire, Uh Start him, man. He's yeah, getting no all the touches now. No surprise <laughs> uh, how much he's involved in this offense. Uh, Dylan, you starting him? All right. That's obvious. Tyreek Hill, Sammy yep. Watkins, Miko Hardman, yeah. and Demarcus Robinson. If you had to pick three, obviously you're picking Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins. Who are you picking out of Miko Hardman and Demarcus Robinson? Nicole Hardman. I'd almost take McCall over Sammy Watkins this week. Miko probably. He's probably got a little more upside. I like it Tyree might be Hill's Sammy back. Watkins that gets in Gilmore. I probably Actually, don't, he probably won't be matched up on Stephon Gilmore. I feel like, yeah, yeah, because Gilmore. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Receivers. So, actually, maybe they'll put him on Travis Kelsey. And Is that where you were going to go with that, LaPlante? Believe it or not, because Belichick's going to try and Stephon take Gilmore's somebody been away. Shadowing One Sammy of their Watkins. best players away, and it might be Travis Yeah, I kind Kelsey. of figured. I know. It's, I I. I'm thinking they Travis should Kelsey try it for Travis too, Kelsey. I think he's mm. just too big. Yeah, if he is a six six tight end. Stephon Gilmore, I think, is only six one, if that. He might even be smaller. Yeah, so that's probably the only reason why yeah, he's with Sammy. But uh, so we're starting Tyreek Hill, uh, Sammy Watkins. I'd probably have you know pivot. I'd be avoiding. And then, yep, you're starting Travis Kelsey, and uh, you know a deep shot in the dark, probably go yeah. with Paul Hardman. And then yep. Travis Kelsey. You see what he did against the Ravens with that long touchdown. So we're gonna move on to our next game. Yeah, Buffalo Bills at the Las Vegas Raiders in their nice new shiny stadium. Yeah, so I, I, I against the so good, what happens? Matchup what happens if Alan, he busts I, against the Raiders? <laughs> but. What if he does? You know, you is saw he the, is he still matchup proof? He's not going to. <laughs> I 
at some point bro he's, he's going to the death movie, star man, man. he's but gotta watch out <laughs> you don't have you still can't afford to have him on your bench <laughs> it's where the saints dreams went to die that one night <laughs> where, where dreams go to die right josh allen's mvp <laughs> dreams are to go to die I think this is going to be a they good did. test I for him, if, but uh, I think Josh will I come out matchup proof again. <laughs> so our answers are clear. Ike's answer is clear. We're going to move on to the running backs. I love it. Uh, Devin Singletary and Zach Moss is questionable again. Uh, Devin Singletary had a good week with Zach Moss out. I think we're starting Devin Singletary if, if Zach Moss is out again, right? Even with Zach Moss back, the, it's, Devin Singletary is the guy. He's showing it. He's showing it. If he's out, ooh. But Zach Moss is. I disagree What has he you. done with him no, in the lineup? I think nope, he's just getting the goal line Zach touches, Moss right? In the lineup, he's not. Yeah, it has. Well, him getting injured definitely doesn't help, and with Singletary and actually performing somewhat good, I think he can right lose even more touches. Moss touches. can. I, I think they'll probably just go back to fifty-fifty split if Zach Moss is if he's if he's not okay. hurt. But uh, so we're going to start Devin Singletary because this Las Vegas Raiders defense is not great. Moving on to the wide receivers, Stefan Diggs and uh, John Brown. Uh, John Brown was cleared from the injury list. He's playing this week. Uh, we starting both these guys? Yep. If you can remember it, you can say it. Can, yeah. <laughs> can I say, uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Jesus, I blew that one. All right. Let's, Stephon let's Diggs, that. Uh, John Brown, the wide receivers for this now. team. Are we starting them this week? Yeah, but can I throw something in here? I, I think, agree. Uh, Stephon he is killing is it right now. You might be able to get some get get decent haul think? for him. Yeah. You, th you think he keeps this yes. up or no? Yeah. Try and get a good running back, guys, for him because he has been playing out of his mind, and I don't think it's going to stay like this. I love Josh Allen and all. But if if you were one of those people hit yeah, by I injuries with Saquon Barkley Diggs and Christian be, McCaffrey and you weren't fortunate enough to get pace. Mike Davis off the waiver wires, uh, I would I would definitely try to sell high on Stefan Diggs. But uh, the question mark in this wide receiving core, I mean, he's, it's kind of inconsistent. Glad we all he agree on gets that. a nice role in the slot. Do we start Cole Beasley in the flex this week? It'd have to be a high-scoring affair for that for him to get a lot of targets. I feel like it's yeah. more Diggs and Brown. <clears throat> desperate, desperate play. But yeah, you can start him. Yeah, he's it's just, he's not. Sexy. It's just not a sexy play. It's like it's not it's sexy, Crowder but you know, if you're desperate, you're desperate. So Tyler Croft, we With talked about him getting two volume. touchdowns against the Rams last week. Uh, is he a streaming option this week? I'd like to see more. It was just one week so far. Yeah, it is only one he, week, and I did no. say the Rams were susceptible to the middle of the field. Right. Yeah. So we're going to move on then to the Las Vegas Raiders and someone who's been shocking the league so far. I mean, at least against the Saints, he struggled against the Patriots. Obviously, that's Bill Belichick. Derek Carr, you think he has a tough matchup this week against the Bills? Don't. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. So Josh yeah, Jacobs then. I mean, he's been Disgusting. a top ten running back so far. He's playing through a little bit of of, of an injury. And the Bills are no joke on the rush defense. I mean, we're on. You got to keep him in. Yeah, we're starting him this week. Do you guys think he can, can score this week? I don't I don't think he'll be putting up the yardage he's used to. But, yeah, I can see him scoring. Yeah. yeah well, that's good. At least he it, hopefully he scores. It. I agree. Yeah. Or he's not going to get many rushing yards. Maybe he gets involved in the passing game. Yeah. But we're going to move on to the wide receiving uh, core. Uh, Henry Rodgers. Yeah, uh, let's see if he can remember these names. Uh, with Henry Ruggs being doubtful Dang and Brian Edwards being out, core. we got Hunter Renfro leading it with Nelson Aguilar and the ghost of Zay Jones. For a flex, sure. 
Give me the Hunter Renfro this week, I think. All right, then, I don't a, see yeah, why. Yeah, start him in your flex. He should see a ton of targets. He has a good rapport with Derek Carr. And uh, if, if you're in a them, deep league, and we, we talk about out, revenge like games. It, Say Jones is like playing his uh, targets, old team, the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. It's, it's worth a shot. So we're yeah. going to move on to the target. I mean, they do like to offense. use him in the red zone. Uh, Darren Waller. He's an obvious start. That's bound to happen. Yeah, he had a little rough. He had a rough game last week. Shut him they, down. They played the yeah. From, they played the Patriots, right? So like we just from what I saw, Belichick, Belichick double teamed Belichick, everything uh, that was short, and yeah, then just let everybody. You know, like, yeah. he wanted Derek Carr to beat him over the top, and Derek Carr didn't want to do it. So we're gonna start Darren Wall this week with hope that he he's gonna get right back on track. Moving on to the next game. We got the shit show of, of a team, Philadelphia Eagles at San Francisco 49ers. Uh, one team just sucks and one team's banged up. Uh, yeah, this is a shit show. It's the all injured. Well, they're both. I don't know, up, man. The, kind of the Niners are a little game. bit more beat up and the Eagles just kind of are below. Our I don't want to be starring Carson Wentz and I hope you guys don't want to be starring them either. No. I agree. No, everyone Ertz else Sanders, er, just avoid Ertz the rest Sanders of the Eagles, except unless you have Ertz really or Sanders. Really, the only two obviously. in that offense that I'm really interested in starting. Yeah, I don't like uh, him. I how do you he can go on my drop Deshaun list. Jackson after he burned. All right. The guy didn't cost me the win though. <laughs> yes, big time. That Plus just means more targets for Zach Ertz, I think. Dale, you think? He's not seen as many targets as he IR. used to this year. After Dallas Goddard went down, pretty sure he had like, what was it, eight targets? Ten targets. Damn. Yeah, he had ten targets after Dallas Goddard went down. It's just because this offensive line can't give Carson Wentz enough time to even look downfield, so he's just dumping it off to either Miles Sanders or Zach Ertz. So... Zach Hurts and Miles Sanders are the only ones worth starting in this offense. Agreed? So we're going to move on to the Niners. Uh, Nick Mullins. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> if you're desperate, start him. I'd rather not. In a no. super flex league. <laughs> You're not starting Nick Mullins against that secondary. Do, do I got a ah, man? Suggest. I wish I remember that stat. He he had a, no. Uh, I know you're sorry. not. Don't do it. Moving on the running back, we got Raheem Mostert ruled out, <laughs> so that leaves the roll up to Jarek McKinnon and Jeff Wilson Jr. Uh, I'd I'd avoid both of these guys this week. You you start either one. I think you can start both. To be honest, really. Uh, yeah, I think yep. he's McKinnon. McKinnon. Get Presumably, we'll get the pass stuff. Yeah, Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. All right, the red zone I, stuff. I, I'm gonna McKinnon. I'll respect yes. they disagree, yes. and we're we're gonna move on because uh, I don't want to talk much more about this backfield. If we're flex options, options. <laughs> flex options. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll be wrong. So moving on to the wide receivers, what a, coming off IR and starting for the first time this year, Debo Samuel. <laughs> don't put him in your lineup. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, give him a week, see how he does. I, I think better weeks are to Don't come with him, and I think he's really a focal part see. of this offense. But wait, wait for that time to come. Yeah. Similar injury to Marquise Brown had last year, and you've seen how he. Uh, yeah, so uh, he, he looked. The unfortunately, season, this really you know, hurts Sterling and Ayuk, so I would not be starting him either. I probably wouldn't even pick him up off the waiver. I think this will be his last week of fantasy revel- re- the relevance with Debo Samuel no. being out. He'll probably be a decoy, just kind of get George Kale's back, man. That's where tons of targets are going, and obviously the Jarek McKinnon and the running backs. Yeah, agreed. But if you're desperate, go probably Brandon yeah. over Kendrick Bourne. Agreed? Yeah. All right. Like you said, George Kittle, you're starting him this week coming off. Yeah. Injury. Finally, he's back. It's nice to see someone healthy, you know, after all this injury news. So, 
we're going to move on to our last game preview. Monday Night Football. We got the uh, Atlanta blow leads all the time Falcons at the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> do, do you guys know how this one's going to go? Or I'm going to guess and say the Atlanta Falcons blow a lead in the second half, possibly. Ding, ding, ding. I think we got the winner. <laughs> It is insane what they managed to pull off the past two weeks. They're the only team in NFL history to blow 15. Why is it Dan Quinn fired either? It's a good question. But we're going to talk about the, uh, I wouldn't even call it garbage time, but it, the fantasy relevant Matt Ryan because they always got to throw. They, are we starting him against this uh, defense? Yep. All right. I like it. I, I don't know about top 10, but I'm starting him. This this yes. Packers defense, it's not a pushover. Top ten play. It, it's not. It's not. Because then he's top twelve. Volume. It, if Volume. He's not, if yeah, he's, he's not eleven to twelve. I just think, I think there's better matchups this week. That's all. Is he eleven or is he eleven or twelve? So or? moving on to the running backs in this offense because <laughs> it's clear that there's not just one. Todd Gurley and Brian, and Brian Hill. Uh, is Brian Hill worth a start this week? Because you're starting nope. with Gurley. Do not put Brian Hill in. Yeah, he's almost no. RB2 flex option. Ty Gurley doesn't even look good. Fair enough. You with how like much they throw. Either. Yeah, you just like to see him get a little bit more involved. Yeah, oh yeah. But if he gets involved, he's definitely running back to material. So we're going to move on to the wide receivers who uh, – Apparently popped up late on the injury report this uh, this week. Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage. Uh, we knew about Julio nursing a hamstring injury. It's because they're running a million routes per game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their legs are just tired, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They are. Uh, if Both if Julio Jones is uh, healthy, you're starting him. Yes. Flex, mm, yeah. Yeah, same yeah. with Kelvin Ridley. And I think you could probably start Russell Gage, yep. too, in, in the flex, possibly, yeah, if he's healthy. If Russell Even Gage is injured, Bean though, back, you're definitely starting sure Hayden Hurst. I mean, Matt Ryan he's going to see all the volume that 40, Russell times. Gage gets. Agreed. Yeah. So I think Hayden Hurst is probably yep. a, a yep. tight end one this week. Would you guys agree? The Not like the, the tight end one. Yeah, but yeah I get you. So we're going to move on to the red-hot quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers. I know you guys hate me saying that, but it, it's He's happening. killing it, man. He's a starter. He's it. For I, sure. He is definitely I, a starter right now. You, you've heard me say before, he's a great NFL quarterback, but not really a good fantasy quarterback. But this year he's proven me wrong. Hell yeah. So we're going to start, we're going to start him against this juicy matchup against the Falcons. Now, the surprise so this year, because so I good. mean, he, he broke out last year. Aaron Jones, uh, great matchup this week against the Falcons. He's going to keep the train going, man. Yeah, you think? Yep. Yes. He's good. Yeah, it's big. yeah probably yeah, he would be more It's sounding like they might the take, you know, up, so the safe route with Devontae Adams and send him this Jones. game also. And there was very late news about Alan Lazard getting uh, core surgery, I believe it was weird yeah so he's absolutely out so we got marquez valdez scantling and yeah. i believe Smoked some guy from the practice squad darius shepherd playing for him so you can see a, you can see a lot of passing work for Aaron jones this week yeah it could be straight mm -hmm. if them yeah, guys you are start him at least in the flex if you're marquez desperate wide receiver three is probably robert tanyan though this week. the tight end for this offense he <laughs> scored Two weeks in a row. Is he worth a stream in this possible high scoring affair? Yeah. Yeah. I think I could I gave, kind of gave you a bunch of shit last week when you said that he could start Tanya and then he catches a touchdown and sees a decent amount of targets, but you talk me into it on the plan. He made my tight end streaming article that you could find at fantasy six pack dot net and uh he uh I like. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Week, uh, Ike, with the any wide thoughts? receivers being banged up, he he could see some targets. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
All you right. can stream him though. I'm sure he'll you be just fine. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. All right. I okay. I'll give you this to end it. I'll give you this to end it. Who would you rather have for the rest of the year, Robert Tanya or Jimmy Grandpa? Jimmy Graham. Nine close. All right, I'd have to go with Tanya on that one just because I'm a Packer fan, and obviously Graham. you guys chose him because <laughs> you're the Bear fans. So we're gonna leave it at that. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> no, we chose him because he's better. So we're gonna re- we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, you can find me at uh, be like underscore Mike with two eyes. Uh, I write the weekly uh, trend Twitter article for fantasy six pack uh, dot com. Uh, it's cool. Dot net. Yeah, dot net. You know, same thing. Nope. Ike, Ike, where can we find you? And Twitter at Ike2121, and I write the Injury Impact article, the best one out of us three. You really you really had to put that in there, huh? <laughs> of course. I, um... <laughs> now you can find you can find me on Twitter at dclemens2222, and I write the ten yes. streaming article at fantasy6pack.net and Spotify. Also, guys, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube, our Fantasy Six Pack YouTube channel. It really does. Yep, like it, subscribe everywhere, please. It means a it means a lot. Have to a great. Me. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could.